you. Me? I swear I'm gonna... Okay, so at first, I was really upset. Who wouldn't be, right? But today, it's been six months since I stopped talking to those so-called friends of mine. And I've gotta admit, I feel pretty great. I have less stress, I have more free time to myself, and when I need a little company, I get to spend it with my amazing boyfriend, Brian. Hey, Brian, uh, did you know that Jessica Tandy had an Oscar uh, for... Jen an Oscar for Driving Miss Daisy, and uh, also several Tonys for Foxfire and Streetcar, and are you listening? Streetcar and Gin Game, and uh, you can hear me, all right? Cool. <laughs> and uh, an Emmy for uh, the television miniseries of Foxfire, which was obviously adapted from the, oh, you're back, uh, it was obviously uh, adapted from the play. Hume Cronin was in it. They were in everything together because they were madly in love. Anyway, on Friday nights, Brian invites his friends over and we play cards. It's, um, nice. I hate all of you. Excuse me? Oh, I mean, well, don't you think it's gross that we've basically all had sex with each other? I mean, because I'm really starting to freak out about it. I don't remember having sex with you. I think I would. <laughs> yeah, my... I'm not gay. Okay, I'm going to ignore that delusion for one moment so I can explain. I was with Brian. Brian was with Frederick after we broke up. Frederick and um, Dirk. Darren. Dylan. Dwayne. Dwayne. <laughs> Ooh, I had a lot of Ds. <laughs> you certainly have. Hit me. Wait, I thought we were playing spit. Anyways, Michael, you're making a very stereotypical and damaging observation of the gay community. And you would know because... Because... Because you're... I'm... Gay. Not gay. Maybe for art like James Franco. Right, so gay. Anyway, let me name someone and you tell me if you slept with them. We have all had more time than me, so I don't... Vinny D'Angelo. Vinny D'Angelo? Is, isn't that that little Italiano with the big unibrow? He had a unibrow before he realized he was gay. Oh, I had him before he realized he was gay too! <laughs> So I had a fling with him when I was in college, right before I met Brian. I slept with him right after you. I met him at a bar last month and shook his hand. Anyway, I think I've made my point. He's just the town bicycle. He was a cyclist when I knew him. <laughs> we... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just have to make a list or whatever. Anyway, I just know this would have never happened when I was with, with those people. Right, Michael. You got two selfish straight women. One with a serious propensity for molestation, and then there's Tom. You never had any real gay friends. You never had any real straight friends. Well, it's just been a weird time for me, okay? I feel like Jessica Tandy and all of her friends and Cocoon, the return. You know, when they get back, but they don't really fit in with society anymore. No one knows what you're talking about. I'll probably end up like Hume Cronin and get leukemia. Are you for real? All right, fine. I get it. So maybe I just need a little time for some readjustment. You could do that in front of us if you like. Uno! Do you have any threes? Ooh, checkmate! I don't think we're playing this correctly. Michael, I just don't understand why. You're not talking to each other, yet you refuse to cancel the engagement. We have our reasons, but it's uh, personal or whatever. Is there a baby involved? No. Well, that would explain Carrie's ankles. I assure you, there is no baby. What? Dad, I can't even understand you. Is he even supposed to be driving? Michael, it sounds like you're questioning my authority, and if uh, I'm going to be your mother, you're going to have to start being a bit more submissive. Oh, honey, this is it. Oh my god, what happened? Clearly, someone just ran in front of the car. Oh, my life just flashed in front of me, and all I saw was carrying a cat, and another cat, and another cat. And I was nowhere to be found! Alright, well, if everyone's okay, then just go ahead inside and do whatever it is you gotta do, and then remember, you have to take me into my appointment with Dr. Jenkins. Would you come in, Michael? I haven't spoken to Carrie in six months. I'm not gonna start now. I know that Carrie is a sloppy train wreck, but 
Can't you just reconcile? Sure, she can say she's sorry. What for again? For being a Okay then. Well, we will be right out. Honey, are you ready? I do hope she answers right away. I hate having to ring a doorbell more than once, don't you? Uh. here. I haven't seen you in some time. Well, Dr. Jenkins, Carrie and I were coming here together for such a long time that I wasn't sure how to continue on without her, really. That's understandable, but you can always talk to me in my nice new office. <laughs> and uh, please call me LaShawn. It's never gonna happen. Okay. So? Oh, right. Um, so as you know, no one in the Friends Club is talking. Right, great. Uh, or ba bad, bad, or um, maybe like uh, a, or or oh, gee, I I feel happy, but um, sort of sad. Well, anyway, this letter was mysteriously tossed into my car, and I wanted your advice about it. Dear Michael, we are sorry we were such jerks. We want to apologize to you in person and make everything up to you. We realized you are the best of the four of us and you were right all along. Please come to the address below on Friday at 1 p.m. for a reconciliation dinner. Love, Carrie, Randy, and Tom. P.S. We really miss your fun facts about Jessica Tandy and Olympia Dukakis. Now, if that's not the most sincere letter I've ever read, I don't know what is, because Jessica Tandy and Olympia Dukakis are basically the most interesting women to ever walk the planet and are the ultimate queens. Okay. Well, how does that letter make you feel, Michael? I mean, do you really want to hang out with them after everything that's happened? Do you think the apology is sincere? Uh... Maybe. I don't know. I like to think that I'm a good judge of character and that I have a lot of common sense. And that's why I got back with Brian. Brian is the boyfriend who dumped you for someone younger, which essentially caused this endless stream of lies you're living? Exactly. So how's it going? Fine. Has he shown any signs of cheating? Um... Hey babe, what you doing? Talking to my ex, Robert. Oh. No, don't worry. They're just friends. <sighs> hey babe. Are you on Grinder? Yeah, but I'm I'm just on to make friends. See? It says friends. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Babe, where have you been all night? I I called and I texted. You're my Aunt Gretchen. She talks for hours. Oh. Aw. Uh. That's so sweet of you. Oh, she sure uses a lot of perfume or cologne. Cologne? You know, old people with their smells. I sure do. My great aunt Frida smells just like feces. We're just friends. Everything's fine. Okay. Oh. Oh, uh, you have to go. Is my time's up? Um. Uh, my alarm just went off. Is something wrong? Is everything okay? My secretary sounds an alarm anytime you or Carrie come so I can run away. Excuse me? <laughs> I mean, um, okay, Carrie is here, so you, you have to go. Did she sound an alarm for me? Uh, she missed you. You're very light on your feet. Oh. No, 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 not that way. Uh, she's gonna come in that okay, way. Okay, well, which way do I go? To the window. That's dangerous. I am a medical professional. I just got my license back after a horrible, dark, and downward spiral. Do you think I would put you in danger or risk my job? Shimmy down the drain and uh, aim for the bush. Dr. Jenkins, I... Uh, uh, hi, Carrie. Um, I, I thought you were going to wait outside for me. Yeah, your secretary told me to wait, but you were taking a really long time, and I know I'm basically your only patient, so 
I didn't think it was that. No, no worries. Um, I was just uh, uh, bird watching at my uh, window uh, here. I don't see a bush. I'm, I'm suing. I'm suing that psycho, and I'm suing you pigs. Sir, you are under arrest. I'm just a lowly ice cream man. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. Hello? Hey, Brian. What's up? Oh, nothing. Just laying around, reading, relaxing. What's up? Nothing. I just thought I'd call and say hello. Oh. Hello. No, I was just out for a walk and I know it seems silly, but I just thought of you and I, I thought I'd call. I hope you don't mind, but when I got back from Dr. Jenkins, I borrowed your jacket. Mine ripped when I fell in a bush. I'll explain later, but um, I should be out for an hour or so, I, I think. Don't worry about the jacket. You take all the time you need. Okay. Uh, hey, Brian? Yeah? I love you. I love you. Bye. Okay, so he's proposing to me. Wow, this is unexpected. But a good unexpected. I can do this. This is a positive step for me. Sure, we've had some rocky times, but this is a sign that he wants to move past all of that. The past is the past, right? I just say, hey, I'm home early. I just wanted to see you. And then I can hint to him that I know. Or maybe I should put the jacket back and pretend I didn't see anything. Maybe he wants to do some elaborate proposal, like a flash mob. Do I like flash mobs? Oh god, I don't want to be like that gay couple in that Home Depot video. That was awkward looking, and I really don't enjoy singing and dancing. Whatever, shut up. Honey, I'm home. Michael, don't you knock? I... What's going on? Uh... Uh, well, uh, it's not what it looks like. You're not in bed with your cousin? I, I am in bed with my cousin. Why are you in bed with your cousin? Uh, well, uh, Michael, you might not know this, but I'm gay. Everyone knows that, you closet case! I just didn't think you were inbreeding with my fiancé! Excuse me? I... Well... I found this in the pocket of your jacket. Oh, uh... This is embarrassing, uh... Oliver, no. I, uh, you make me truly happy. More happy than I've ever been fake happy with Michael, and, uh, Stop. I love you. Uh, will you marry me? Brian, I love you. Yes. Yes. But your your cousins! What are you, some sort of Republican? Get out of here so we can enjoy our moment! Everyone, I'm ready for my apology. 